Hello, it's Davey Mooney coming to you from the University of North Texas where I run the jazz guitar program. I'm a Benedetto artist, Sunnyside Records, got them all up there, Sunnyside Records artist. Got my uh, Mel Bay books including the brand new Into the Labyrinth, an anatomy of position playing for jazz guitar. And there's a new Sunnyside record on the way, got it tracked down in Brazil and I'm going to mix it uh, in, where are we going to mix it, New Orleans in October. So excited about that, October 2022. And uh, let's see, but today I wanted to talk to you about a John Coltrane song called Lazy Bird. Not to be confused with Lady Bird uh, from Tad Dameron. Uh, it's a great tune from the album Blue Train from the late 50s, like 57, 58. And there's also a really great Pat Martino version from, I guess, maybe 1970, the album East one of my uh, favorite Pat Martino tracks. I got a lot from uh, that album and from the book uh, Pat Martino, The Early Years. Great transcription book. Um, I forget the name. Steve, is it Steve Kuhn or Steve Kahn? I should have looked that up before I made the video. <laughs> one's a guitar player and one's a pianist. My bad. But uh, it's a great book and I used to read through that book a lot and I got a lot of uh, ideas and Martino vocabulary. So, uh, yeah, anyway, I'll dive right into the, the tune. You know, Blue Train has got uh, some blueses on it, as you would imagine. And it's also got, you know, Moments Notice, really uh, great sort of proto giant steps. I mean, there's no necessarily relationship to the giant steps changes, but uh, I guess those two tunes, Lazy Bird and Moments Notice, are kind of like the hard chord songs, songs that are up tempo with a lot of changes. Um, a few years before Giant Steps, which is the ultimate up-tempo, you know, lots of changes song, <laughs> and all the variations on those, uh, that cycle. So, and then, the, you know, the rest of the record you got I'm Old Fashioned as a ballad, which is beautiful, and some blues tunes, and it's just a really great, great album. So anyway, about Lazy Bird, uh, starts off, I mean, there's a little intro, but the proper song starts off with like an A minor, like A minor, D7, C minor, F7, Two five in E flat, and then a two five in G. So you got a few key areas right off the bat, you know, sort of two five in G, two five in B flat. Doesn't go to B flat. Two five in E flat. Get to E flat, and then a two five in G. And then another thing really interesting there. Uh, that's the A section. It's an A A B A tune, thirty two bar tune. But instead of a normal turnaround that would take you back to A minor. After the G, he goes A flat minor, D flat seven. So, Oops. kind of a chromatic ascending from G major to A flat minor to D flat seven, and those chords have. Uh, you know, uh, a lot in common actually. You wouldn't think that they they would necessarily, but you know, G major seven, the third and seven of, of G major seven are the same as the third and seven of A flat minor seven. You know, F sharp becomes uh, G flat, this flat seven of A flat minor seven, and then B natural becomes C flat, the minor third of A flat minor seven. And that's something that Jerome Kern called enharmonic modulation, and that's kind of the basis of the the uh, thing I talk about in personalizing jazz vocabulary, negative guide tones. The idea if you wanted to play something on, on G major and sort of smooth out the transition from G major to A flat minor seven. There's actually a few notes that are those chords have in common, and particularly G flat and B, F sharp and B, G flat and C flat. And the second A, And then the bridge, there's a 2-5 and an A. And then the same thing, you have an A major and then B flat minor, E flat 7. So that third and seven of A major become the third and the seven of B flat minor through the enharmonic, enharmonic modulation. So I mean, it's not really a modulation, but the common tones that those notes share, the negative guide tones, if you will. In that case, the melody itself, you know, ends on the major third of um, A major, then the two five in G, and again A flat minor D flat to get back to. And 
then the last time it's kind of more of a regular 2-5 or a regular turnaround getting back to A minor. They don't do on the last A, they don't do that. So it's interesting, you know, West Montgomery's tunes, a lot of them from that time period would have those chromatic two fives too, like Road Song, and uh, there's some other ones. Uh, you know, Betty Golson tunes have have those chromatic two fives as well. It's very, very common from the tunes of this period, like mid to late 50s, early 60s songs. And uh, it's great, you know, on, on I love Blue Train. There's so much, uh, so many great solos to mine for vocabulary and ideas. And on this one, I think it, uh, Lee Morgan goes first, shredding trumpet solo. Then you get Curtis Fuller. You get a trombone solo. You get Train. I think is third. Is that right? Then you get uh, Kenny Drew plays a great one. And Paul Chambers pulls out the bow. <laughs> I think you get a little Philly Joe too. I think right before the the uh, head out. And this song is always funny too because no one really. Uh, uh, can remember the coda chord changes and uh, you know as a tribute to that I'm not going to tell you what they are because I don't remember either and I could have looked them up but you know that wouldn't be uh, that wouldn't be keeping it real you know people call us tune and they're like yeah and then they remember somewhere at the head out that nobody knows the <laughs> the coda and they just end up it's always this kind of raggedy ending <laughs> I'm reliving some, uh, I wouldn't call them traumas, but just kind of funny uh, experiences playing this tune uh, in my life. But anyway, you can, you can look them up. There's a nice little uh, cycle of uh, chords he does at the end, a, a nice little coda. Um, and the Pat Martino record uh, on East is really something. You know, it's just sh really shredding guitar solo. I guess they do it around the train record. It starts, I don't know, 250 maybe beats per minute and creeps up a little bit. The Martino one is maybe a little faster. And he just plays this long shredding solo. I remember there's this one lick that I used to do a lot that I got from that solo, but solo where he goes. I think like in the on the A section. And I used to play that a lot. I thought that was so cool. Um, and yeah, he plays at one point he does this thing some kind of ascending chromatic line like that and somebody in the studio like yells you know like, whoa it's great it's like that moment on still by starlight the 64 concert where somebody just loses it and has to holler so uh yeah but it's a great tune um and when i'm soloing on it you know i look for those commonalities right like a minor to c minor i mean one way to think about that too would be like c major to c minor because A minor and C major are really similar. So, you know, it's major to minor. So they have a lot of common tones, right? The note C, the note D, G, uh, A. And then, you know, from C minor, F7 to F minor again. There's nothing wrong with being sort of parallel and, say, going like... an idea on the A minor and modulating it to the various other key areas but you know sometimes I like to uh, as I've said on many of these videos look for the common common tones and when the changes are jumping around a lot uh, look for things that can kind of smooth them out if, if the chords are really complicated I almost want to make it sound like less complicated and vice versa if it's a simple tune you know <laughs> You know, and then you got to get back to G. You could almost think of that E flat as like an A minor seven flat five. So if you're going like, so I didn't really think A minor D seven G at the end of the A section. I kind of just stayed on E flat until the D came, because that's pretty very closely related, right? There's an A minor 7 flat 5 from the 5th, there's an E flat major 7. You're kind of closer than you think. Uh, you know, you're always, or the other adage is you're always one uh, fret away from the right note, which is true. You know, you're never more than a half step away. And you know, like I said, uh, when I want to go from G major to A flat minor, D flat 7 before getting back to A, I try to uh, 
come up with an idea that's going to take advantage of that commonality of the B and the F sharp on the G becoming and harmonically to the same pitches, you know. Sometimes I forget, you know, in the heat of battle, I've got through the, you know, that first A, because it's mainly like the first A and uh, the bridge where you have those chromatic passing note tones. Um, so sometimes I forget that they're coming, pass, passing chords. So. tunes where uh, there's, a little, there's a little bit of an athletic event, maybe not as uh, comparable to Moments Notice, maybe. I don't find it as daunting as Train Changes, but uh, it's, it's a fun one. So I'm going to play a few choruses on it. Uh, I don't do it quite as fast as uh, they do on those records, but you know, I'm going for uh, clarity over speed. So I hope you all enjoy it. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 